Hey there, I'm Karen Campbell. This is my mixed media channel. Today I'm really excited because I got a whole set of pan pastels and I've used them for like five minutes in the past. I really don't know a lot about how to handle them, how to use them, what surfaces they go well on. And my favorite thing to do when I get new art supplies is kind of learn things in reverse order. So instead of going out and buying workshops and classes and hitting YouTube really hard, I actually like to dive in all by myself. And I kind of like to just kind of dive in blind and do like a whole session where I don't know how things are gonna work. I don't know how things are gonna react. I don't know what I can layer on and kind of experience that firsthand. And then when I've run into all these problems, um, I can go later and then do my research, then go check out YouTube videos, then talk to artists that I know who use and love the same art supply because it's my experience that helps me craft part of my knowledge. So it's not just learning from others, but I really truly learned so much just from experimenting with things. I um, just experimenting with things myself. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is I get questions all the time, like emails every single day from students and people who watch my videos on YouTube. And they're like, Hey, can I do this, this, and this? And can I do this, this, and this? And can I do this and this? And, um, sometimes I know the answer because I've done it before, but sometimes I don't. Um, and I find myself more and more being like, I don't know, try it. Like, I, I don't know. You just have to try it. Like, I don't know. You just have to try it. And it made me realize how much um, how much knowledge that I have in my head is only just for me personally, just trying shit out and not knowing if it's going to work or not and failing and that's fine, but that's how you learn. So I don't want you to be afraid. What I want you to be, take away from this video is that I don't know everything. No one knows everything and you can learn huge amounts of awesome things by just trying stuff out. So today I'm using my pan pastels on Yupo paper because hey, why not? Are you ready? Okay. Let's go. And also I'm drawing a male face three quarter portrait. If you would like some tips on how to draw, you can check out my Karen Campbell draws YouTube channel. I also have specifically related to today's video, an awesome little book resource called how to draw fun fab fellas. Since today I am drawing a fellow. Now let's get the party started and go watch the video. All right, here we go. I'm going to stay here and kind of comment as we watch this together. Um, because I haven't seen this in a while, actually, and it'd be fun to uh, share my thoughts as we get rolling here. Okay, so um, I bought the whole 80, 80 set because I do teach art, um, I do teach mixed media. So um, even though I'm starting from scratch with this, I plan on using the heck out of these and really learning tons and eventually having success. And when I do have those successes, I can come up with new projects and share them with my mixed media students over in the mixed media society in my art school, Awesome Art School. And if you want more information, you can go head over to awesomeartschool.com to learn more about all of my art clubs. Um, all right, this is an amazing reference that I'm using. So I am not crediting the outcome or the design to myself. This is based on this awesome deviant art artist. And again, my drawing skills myself come from this. Uh, this is my self-published book, How to Draw Fun Fab Fella. So I love combining a reference together with my actual knowledge and know-how to come up with some really fun, fun designs, but this is not my original design. So shout out to that deviant artist, um, that deviant art artist. And I will have that information in the description box for you. So, um, yeah, rocking out the drawing here again, this is Yupo paper. If you're new to Yupo paper, it's like this super, plasticky. It's not, it, it, it's plastic. It's hundred percent plastic. It's non-porous. So, um, drawing on it is this weird, like slippery sensation. It's, it's hard to describe, but it really is like a skating rink. So it's like, imagine Bristol, but 80 times smoother if that, that's even possible. Um, as you can see here, I see how I still put my, my guidelines in. I have published many books on faces, taught a million, and every single time I draw a face, I go back to basics and I put my eye line in. I put the, this is the three quarter line. That's when a face is turned three quarters of the way around. So that line helps center all my face, my facial features. So it doesn't matter how many times I've drawn something, I always go back to basics, like I said. So this dude reminds me of like a young Van Gogh. I just, he's edgy and super cool. And um, I definitely can benefit from drawing more male faces because I don't draw them hardly, um, 
hardly enough, I don't think. So I don't have a, I don't practice them an awful lot. What I love about drawing male faces is the the angles and all the cuts in their facial features. Like see those, the, those wrinkle lines between his eyes and like his, the nose is just like these straight lines. All right, so now this is my very first time <laughs> experimenting here. Though there's no tooth. Tooth is not a thing in Yupo paper. Um, that background took like five milliseconds because it just slid right on. It was, it, it was amazing. <laughs> it really was. So I was hoping to go in with this little fancy tool and these tools actually came with that 80 set. I didn't purchase them separately. And I am just experiencing this now for the first time. Now I was going in with this kind of skin tone, but I already had some of that really dark color on my soft tool. So they were blending on the paper as I was going. So the first thing I noticed was, first of all, I couldn't erase as well with my vanish eraser as I thought I would be able to. And I need to go and experiment in my next project with some different erasers. I watched a single video on pan pastels before making this. So I lied when I said I didn't watch anything. I watched one. And the one demonstration I watched was pen pastels on Yupa paper, which gave me the idea. I've also had this pack of Yupa paper for like two years and I've used a single sheet out of it. So I thought, perfect. Now when this artist was using her eraser on the Yupa paper, it like, it was like swipe and it all came out and it was a kneaded eraser. And this vanish eraser I have, you can see it up in the top corner of my screen, um, is my go-to for absolutely everything. And I don't think it works on here, which I thought was fascinating. This is the first time it hasn't worked. So again, first, I'm these are these big takeaways when I'm, I'm approaching a new, a brand new medium from scratch. Like I need to go experience that myself. So rather than asking someone else, I'm just going to find out, like, let's test this stuff out. So one, that eraser does not work great. So I need to not use that. Number two, when I was trying to, um, Oh, here I am futzing with these little tools. So there's all sorts of different shaped things that you get, these little applicators. And I'm just, I'm just trying things out. So some of them worked awesome, others did not. I thought I was going to be able to layer these and they weren't really layering. I, they were just mooshing. And I think it's because there's zero, zero, zero tooth. So um, that's why I'm having kind of issues figuring out uh, blending versus layering. So I, yeah, I, it was a struggle. It was an interesting struggle though. And I, I quite enjoyed it. So here I am trying to just lay like the, there's like this orange. And that was another thing I have heard people talk about. I have a really good friend uh, who's an artist named Jenny Mano and she like lives for pan pastels. And I, uh, we have a lot of overlapping students. And so I know that they love it. And I, and I've heard that these are like opaque and they layer, but I wasn't finding that experience for myself, which again is why these play sessions are so hugely informational and, and important. Um, so, but again, I think it has to do with the paper. So right after I watched this and had such a hard time layering, my, my things were just all mashing together. I looked up because I had to figure out what was going on. Was it me or was it the paper or was it the medium? I was reading and they were saying, um, I watched one more tutorial. So I watched one before this, which had the pan pastel and Yupa paper. And I won, I watched one more immediately following the making of this project. And that artist was using, um, sanded paper, which I had never even heard of before. So actually yesterday I ran out and bought, um, a giant sheet of 400 100 grit sandpaper at my local Jerry's Artorama. And that's going to be my next experiment. So stay tuned, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, if you want to kind of see what happens next, because I know I do. And she was saying in this tutorial that the grit in the sanded paper and all that real pronounced tooth is what allows her to be stacking layers and layers of pastels on top of each other. And I was like, aha, the tooth, not just a regular tooth, like drawing paper or pastel paper, but like sanded paper is like basically giant teeth in the drawing world ready to grab onto your pan pastel. So that's coming up next and I can't wait 
to figure out what the heck that's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, how it impacts my layering. So I'm going in with, um, this is just a colored pencil. This is a wax Prismacolor pencil and like it works great. But the reason I stopped was like, I'm not drawing all these hairs. Like hell no. If you know me at all, I'm like not into details i'm super lazy so i like hair making hair when it's like a gist of it like drawing the shape and then coloring in the values and then going in with some details so i was like mm, this is not happening with colored pencils so as a compromise to myself i actually grabbed um my neocolor twos by karen dash now these are water soluble i have no intention of of using water in this whatsoever Again, I'm just playing, like, how do these things stick on here? <laughs> I don't know. So um, so I was just trying things. It actually worked out really well. And it actually worked out so well, I, I ended up using them a whole bunch more. So you can see I'm going in with the real darker values. It's a, it's a dream. If you get the right applicator that's clean, and I did, I was fine. I could just wipe off most of the color with like a paper towel. It wasn't a big deal. But um, if you could kind of nail the color out the gate, you could just go right in with that color, like, like a shirt, for example, and just bang it out in two seconds and have your values and your colors correct. Then like, that's awesome. That's super, super cool. I, and I like to work really quickly. And this enabled me to like lay on these colors like instantaneously, magically quick. Um, the trouble I was having was again, um, the, it, it, I was not able to layer on top because I'm thinking, and again, this is part of my process of learning and discovering was I'm pretty sure that it's just because this people paper lacked any tooth whatsoever. So in the comments, feel free to like, give me your best hot tips and tricks and like, let me know if you're learning too and what you would like to find out more about. And I am happy to be your guinea pig. Like that's my pleasure. <laughs> I love spending money on art supplies that I have no idea how to use. It's actually super exciting. So again, I'm trying to, what I was frustrated with when I was trying to get these really, really dark, dark values. And I found that I wasn't able to, like I couldn't with just the pan pastels alone. I was forced to have to go in with my um, Neocolor 2s in order to do that make my head smaller here so you can see better oops get my cursor for here too so you also don't see that so i was just notice i'm not using my vanish eraser because i was because i it wasn't working properly so i'm just using the regular eraser from my blackwing pencil um i wanted to scoot where his hairline was that's another thing i couldn't like get rid of the eraser like tidbits like I couldn't get rid of them. They just kind of like embedded themselves in the paper. I know super weird things were happening. Like, see, it kind of got stuck in there and I couldn't get it out. Like so bizarre. So I'm changing up my applicator tips, just trying different things. Highly encourage you to do the same. Like get brave, get do stupid things, try weird things and see what works and what doesn't. Um, it's such a great opportunity to learn. And I miss so miss doing it. I have such a tried and true way of doing certain things like my hamburger system. I've been creating projects with for years in the same way because it works and I know that I'm going to get success with it. So that's why I use it and I teach it so extensively. But gosh darn it, I, it was time to break out and just try some totally new things and learn from other people too. Instead of all, me always being the expert, it's really refreshing to go and be the student and just come to the table with a totally blank slate and be like, hey, what do I do here? I have no idea. Teach me something. Like it's kind of the best feeling in the whole world. So as you can see, I'm going in with, again, my Neo color too. I really liked the look of them with the Pan Pastels. I feel like they kind of matched each other. Um, the reason I didn't use like oil pastels was that you can't put anything on top of oil pastels because oil always has to kind of go last. I do know that. That's why I was keeping with my water-based formulas, even though I have no intention, again, of activating this with any water or anything. Um, God, he looks so cool. And there was many points at, uh, at this project where I should, you know, that I look back, I'm like, oh, I should have stopped there. I should have stopped there. But I, the reason I didn't is I wasn't done learning yet.
Like I still wanted to push the limits and like experiment and I just wasn't done. And sometimes to be honest too, I get like, um, I don't want to finish because I'm having so much fun. So sometimes I'll just kind of hang out and stall with a project just so I can spend more time with it. It sounds really creepy and kind of weird, like a <laughs> of some sort of weird friend, but, um, but I do, I like, like spending time with my projects and this is very sharp contrast to when I was just starting out learning mixed media, I actually had was the opposite. I like couldn't wait to get done. And I was like, ugh, like good enough, blah, blah, blah. I would kind of quickly rattle off something and I couldn't wait to be done. And I had no patience for layering at all. I didn't want to work at anything. I wanted to be one and done. And that's how I was for a really, really long time. There's still a lot of that impetuousness in me still. Um, I'm just kind of brave and bold and I don't care about bad results. I just want to do stuff. Um, <laughs> this kid's outside my window screaming. It's so funny. It's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. Um, look at his orange eyebrow. That is hilarious. So here I'm actually putting the, the colored pencil over the Neo Color 2, which I hadn't done yet. So we have like the first layer being Pan Pastel, the second layer being the Neo Color 2, and then the details with the color pencil, which is mostly wax based because this is a Prismacolor. Um, that worked fine. It was neither here nor there. Again, though, it was something about the Yupo paper kind of prevented the dark, dark colors from being dark. It was really strange. Like I was like, I want black and it was not having it. Very interesting. And that I don't understand. I just assume it's because of the quality of the paper. But I didn't think that having the quality of paper would prevent the pigments themselves from being laid down and creating the color that they were supposed to be that part wasn't making sense to me and still doesn't so um yeah i can't wait again i can't wait to to discover the experience on this sanded grit paper i'm fascinating to see what's going to happen so now i'm kind of eking out these highlights using the eraser i do think that's a really cool property of the pan pastels on the yupo paper you have this subtractive quality because if you do have the right eraser you can get back to the white of the paper so i don't need to introduce anything white painterly on top yet it doesn't mean you can't it doesn't mean i won't but theoretically the pan pastels anyways are erasable which is super cool and very unusual for an art supply especially one that um has the appearance of being paint like paintable so i think that's super super neat so kind of just redefining the features of his face so um <laughs> blending stump is at ginormous it's like a full inch and a half it's you can get them at jeremy's they're oh, jeremy's jerry's artorama they're like jumbo and it was yeah all of my blending stumps were upstairs behind me actually on that my drawing table i have a i did a giant drawing of a castle and a dragon and i used all my blending stumps so that wasn't with me at my art table so i had just had this one giant blending stump and so now i'm just kind of experimenting i had some charcoal on on it and i wiped most of it off before i'm trying this but i'm just seeing if the pan pastels will respond to the blending stump and also like will the graphite blend with this blending stump if i was on regular paper and i applied that blending stump to that graphite because i drew with my black wing which is super soft it's like a 6b it would totally would have blended and it kind of wasn't moving so again super interesting like super interesting learning experiment for this whole thing so i have i've been ignoring his ear details um are super hard because the applicators are all of them are broad even the quote unquote like little skinny ones aren't um the next move could have also been to try pastel pencils over the pan pastels i'm gonna try that when i do it on the sanded paper i, I knew the yupo was not gonna have it because like nothing was sticking so i that's why i didn't try that here i was already knew enough from the pan pastels like i was like okay this pastel's not gonna layer let's stick with these wax based products and water-based products so introduced some green for his eyes 
try to kind of get things together, get the details in there so we can move on and kind of come to fruition. Still totally messing around. Um, there was a ton. So the, here I'm just getting brazen and reckless and like not caring anymore. So, and also having like the time of my life. So there's a ton of blue in that reference photo. Like he is a real pronounced blue everywhere on his face, a ton on the left, like all the shading and the shadow on the left side of the face was all blue. So I'm like, all right, my pan pastels are not sticking. Let's go for it. So I just was grabbing my blues and purples and I went to Scribble Town. <laughs> just went to Scribble Town. You know, this project wasn't a lesson for anybody. This is not going to be hanging on anyone's wall. It's not a present. It's not a commission. Like this is playtime. This is, this is purely, purely educational playtime where I'm like, teach me something, art supplies, like let's go to the limits. Let's just try. Let's do something ugly. Let's do something stupid. Let's try something. Let's try these random colors and just see what happens. Like, don't care about the outcome. And we talk about this and I'm, we, I mean, in teachers teach their students about this, um, you know, the importance of letting go of the expectations of the outcome, but experiencing that and saying that are two very, very different things. It's really easy for me to be like, just let go of the outcome. Just don't worry about the final product. Just let it go. Because the, what that really means is that you truly do not care. So you're like, you have to kind of like disassociate your emotions about a piece and you have to like not care is the place that you have to get to. And you have to be come to terms and swallow the fact that like you might screw this up to a point of no return. You have to swallow that before you can create with out of care in the world. And you can like look at your piece and be like, oh my God, what have I done? It's so it's super hard and it takes a lot of courage. So it's, I, I understand how hard that is and how easy it is to say the words like, J don't care about the outcome, just, just go for it is, is so much easier said than done. But I do strongly, 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 strongly suggest trying it at least once, like for real letting go of expectations and just doing crazy stuff. Because what happens is that it really emboldens you and it makes you way braver. Like now I'm just like chucking stuff around right now. Like, cause I'm like, we are past the point of no return. We've already said goodbye to expectations. We're already hit the ugly stage. Like, let's just be crazy. And all those scribbles and that's just at the stage I'm at. And that is like really freeing. It's freakishly freeing to just like start chucking things around because you really truly feel in your heart that you don't care. And then cool shit starts happening. So yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. Like seriously, if you can get to that point, try it just once at least be super brave and, and just try not to care so much. Ooh, it's very exhilarating. So now I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of done with my, my crazy freedom session. And I want to just call this a day. I'm going to, I'm ready to put this to bed. And when I, when I get out my Pentel pocket brush pen, any project drawing mixed media, doesn't matter. That's when I'm done. <laughs> so I always wrap up every drawing and mixed media project, uh, pretty much with this one drawing utensil and I outline everything. I'm such an outliner. I, for a long time, I fought it and I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. It's not necessary. You're ruined it. You need to be a purist. If you're doing watercolors, you have to finish in watercolors. If you're doing paint, you have to finish in paint. And then I just gave myself permission to be like, nah, you know what? I'm using it. I freaking love this tool and I'm using it every day and I don't care. And so I do. And it's now it's my favorite thing. And I just gave my permission to go for it. And I, yeah, I don't even worry about it. And I love all my pieces because I love doing them. Like it's the creative process that feels so exhilarating. And that to me, that feeling is more important than the outcome of my piece. When you can switch your priority from result to experience, it's that's a powerful place to hang out as an artist. So it's hard though. It's really, really hard. It's super hard to do. I'm not saying it's easy. It's hard and it takes practice. And you might have a lot of failed projects, but you won't because you'll just keep going. 
you'll just keep going. And that's the trick too, is that if you get to a, like a really ugly place, like just keep going until you get out of it. If you stop, you'll, you'll definitely reach the ugly phase and you will never get out of it. But if you can power through and keep going, awesome stuff starts to happen. So now I'm just, I have a little bit of this, um, opaque, um, paint on my brush and I'm just adding some highlights and having a really good time. So if you learned anything at all in this video, let me know your comments below. Um, if my voice is annoying you, that's what captions are for. I'm super sorry, but let me know uh, what you would like me to see me do next. And I'm happy to oblige. And thank you so much for watching and uh, just putting up with my babble the entire time. <laughs> I will see you next week with another fun tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Educational, craziness, recreational. It's all good. Look at that handsome guy. See? All came together at the end. More or less, for better or for worse. There he is. Thank you for watching. Ooh. <laughs> oh, bye, guys.